In Mark chapter 9, starting in verse 30, all the way down to the end of the chapter, he's talking about the Christian journey, the disciples. Here's how we must live. In verse 30, and they departed thence and passed through Galilee, and he would not that any man should know it. For he taught his disciples and said unto them, The Son of Man is delivered into the hands of men, and they shall kill him. And after that he is killed, he shall rise the third day. Amen. Praise God. And you see, that is the mountaintop message thus far in the book of Mark. Amen. Praise God. Jesus wants us to keep center in our thinking what the gospel is. The gospel is the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And your journey has to be built on the fact that he died to pay the price for sin. He was buried, amen, praise God, so that we could bury our past with him in baptism and so that we can rise in newness of life like he was resurrected from the dead. But they understood not the same and were afraid to ask him. They've been rebuked a few times for not getting this. Christ is going to suffer and he's going to rise from the dead. And they they didn't understand it again, and and but were afraid to ask him. And I want you to see what he does as you try to live out the gospel. Amen. Praise God. And even with your struggles and with your questions, I want you to see what you really need to do to apply it. In verses 33, he came to Capernaum and being in the house, he asked them, what was it that you disputed among yourselves by the way? But they held their peace for by the way, they had disputed among themselves who should be the greatest, who should be the greatest in the kingdom. Isn't it something the Lord is addressing? You've got to park this worrying about who's the greatest. Just be yourself in the Lord. It's interesting in Luke chapter 22, in the crucifixion, when it was talking about uh, there's one that's going to betray, they go back into this, who's the greatest, and so on. You've got to deal with not getting so wrapped up on who's the greatest, but rather be great for the Lord yourself. In verse 34, but they held their peace for by the way they had disputed among themselves who should be the greatest. And he sat down and called the 12 and said unto them, if any man desire to be first, the same shall be last of all and servant of all. And he took a child and set him in the midst of them. And when he had taken him in his arms, he said unto them, Whosoever shall receive one of such children in my name receiveth me, and whosoever shall receive me receiveth not me, but him that sent me. He's emphasizing in your Christian journey, get out of this wondering who's the greatest. Just be great for the Lord. Be childlike, but not childish. In verse 38, and John answered him saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name and he followeth not us and we forbade him because he followed not us. But Jesus said, forbid him not for there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name. You've got to park this worrying about who's the greatest among you. You've got to become a child and stop being childish. And you've got to even love those that aren't necessarily part of your camp. Amen. But Jesus forbade him, forbid him not, for there is no man which shall do a, a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is on our part. For whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name, because you belong to Christ, verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. And then the rest of the chapter goes into more of this, the importance of starting out with just loving the fact that you have an opportunity to be great for the Lord. Love the fact that you can be a child like in your faith and stop being childish. Love the fact that you don't have to go around the world judging everybody else. Amen. You just have to be what you're supposed to be. Amen. Praise God. And then he goes into uh, loving. Amen. Praise the Lord and not being offended. I've got to hit that last one. Not being offended. If you've got a problem with your hand touching stuff, deal with it. If you've got a problem with your eyes, your feet walking in such a direction, deal with it. And here's a passage that has left all kinds of scholars shocked and startled by the fact that you indeed can lose your salvation. If you don't deal with your hand uh, uh, touching stuff it shouldn't, your eyes watching stuff it shouldn't, if you don't deal with your walking in directions that you shouldn't, and this passage actually paints very clearly, hell is real. Amen. Praise God. Deal with things you shouldn't be touching. 
Deal with things you shouldn't be watching. Deal with things you shouldn't be walking toward. Amen. Because you're putting at risk your salvation and hell is real. That's the rest of Mark chapter 9.